Hello and welcome to Badger Lodge Garage and welcome to a very sweaty and warm three-wheel van. You join me at the seaside, I've just been to collect some stuff because I promised myself I wouldn't buy any, uh, any more old junk off the internet. So that's why this stuff was free. But it is warm in here. This is, I think it's about 25 degrees out. Celsius, that is. And it's... I've got sweat in places I didn't know sweat came from. Oh. Just have to use the, uh, the quarter light prop. Oh, that's better. There are certain things that I willingly ignore that are problems. Things like windows and quarter lights, and it does come and bite you on the bottom. It's the fine line between winding the window down and breaking the handle off. <sighs> that do. So in this video we're going to talk about the touchy subject Yay. that is ethanol. I don't know who that was. That's right, the grape juice that goes in all your fuel these days, or most of it. There are lots of opinions on the internet about ethanol fuel in classic cars, so I thought I'd add mine. Yeah. I should say if you can avoid putting ethanol in your vehicles and you can afford to do that, you go, go for it. It's, there's no... Uh, you do then remove all of the issues that come with having ethanol in fuel. But I should say if you can't afford the, uh, the more expensive fuel with less ethanol in it, the E5, you know, I don't think it's really the end of the world if you, uh, if you put it in there. And this video is going to tell you my opinion why. So let's have a look. Imagine being stuck in a very small Tupperware box in a blazing sun on a hot patio. Then you get an idea of what it's like being in here. So first I think we should say, what is ethanol? It's what the government have started having added to uh, normal petrol, or gasoline, to uh, reduce the carbon footprint as it's been burned. Which in itself is not a bad idea. But what ethanol is, is alcohol. It's distilled from, well, anything that it can be distilled from, really, waste products from the, uh, from the agricultural industry, some sort of barley and things like that, and then ferment it and make an alcohol out of it. And the alcohol burns quite well, and um, what they do is mix it with fuel, and thus you have your ethanol content, so E10 is anywhere up to 10% ethanol. So it doesn't have necessarily 10% ethanol, but it can have that much. That's what it is. And um, E5 is only 5%. And E5 is the stuff they tend to put premium unleaded now. So that's your high octane expensive stuff. And I should probably start with saying that I run both my cars on the cheapest potato juice I can find. I've tried running both of these on expensive fuel and the only notable difference was the amount of money in my wallet. I'll tell you what though, it's a bit more pleasant being in here. A bit of, you know, working windows. With ethanol, I believe it comes down to knowing your own car. For example, the fuel system in a Morris Minor contains one metal pipe and one rubber hose. The metal pipe goes from the tank to the front of the car and into the fuel pump, and the rubber hose goes from the fuel pump to the carburetor. Now the metal pipe is going to be not really affected by the ethanol content of the fuel. Uh, besides ethanol's ability to attract water, it's not going to be that much of an issue. The rubber hose on the other hand that goes from the pump to the carb 
is likely to be affected by ethanol. They will go hard, crack and break off. So that is your weak link. But once you've found the weak link, you know what to look for. And in my opinion, that's the best way to look at ethanol fuel. Know your car, know what it's compromised of, and know how to inspect and what to look for when you're running that kind of fuel. For example, the Reliant. The fuel line is of a nylon plastic type from the tank to the fuel pump. From the fuel pump to the carburetor, it's a solid metal pipe. It's, uh, well, in this case, it's copper because that's what I replaced it with. It was a steel one. Uh, neither of those two materials are going to be drastically affected by the ethanol. And more importantly, the big one that goes across the top of the engine in all the hot stuff is made, made of copper. So um, it's not going to you know, perish and fall off and start spraying juice all over your, your hot stuff which in a three-wheel plastic van like this is less than ideal because if you google Reliant Regal on fire it's quite impressive you see them they burn well it's like there's nothing left at the end so you want to avoid that at all costs and to give you a better idea I'll pop the bonnet on this and we'll go and we'll have a look underneath Hmm. And here's the example of the one rubber hose that's in the engine bay on the Morris Minor and I think pretty much on the whole car. Um, please excuse this setup, some purists are going to hate me for that. But it's normally it's meant to have a, a braided rubber hose that just goes over and straight into the top of the carb. But um, when I first bought this seven years ago, there was rust particles coming through from the tank because it had sat for a while. So I just chucked an inline filter in it and um, sort of kind of left it really and that's how it is and it's been fine. But um, as I say these hoses are seven years old and they've had the cheapest fuel in them imaginable. But as you can see if you just grab your hose and pull it like this there are no little cracks appearing in it. It's nice and supple still. It's not hard at all. And that's what you've got to look for when you're checking hoses. Because even if it's still there and not leaking, if you can bend it and it comes up with lots of little cracks, that means it is perishing and it's on the way out. Um, and you really want to keep on top of that because that's a very nice hot exhaust manifold bit. So if this breaks off and starts squirting fuel on, you get vaporisation and um, then it only takes a little bit of a fire to ignite that and you're off, you know, and that's a, it can put a bit of a dampener on your day. And is it? Look at this, look, my vacuum advance boots fall into bits. That's not going to be helping things, is it? That's a vacuum leak. It's all split and cracked. Let's get a new one of them. But, um, yeah, rubber hose, this is the only one in the whole car. Possibly a joining one somewhere else. But, yeah, that's why I don't have a problem running ethanol fuel in this. <coughs> Oh, nature's getting in. Oh. The carburetor in this has two rubber diaphragms in it. It has the throttle, the accelerator pump, and it has Zenith the economizer, um, which that's neither here nor there. We can pretend that that one doesn't exist. The throttle pump on the other hand is very important because that's what gives you a little spray of fuel to raise the engine revs when you try to pull away. If you just relied on the natural draft of the carburetor to pull more fuel through as you open the throttle, it's going to fall on its face. So you need an initial squirt of rich fuel mixture just to pick it up a bit before the rest of the, the jetting in the carburetor takes over. So if that goes crispy and stops working, you'll know about it. This carb had all new gaskets and diaphragms in it when I first put it all back together. And so far, I've not had any issues with crispiness. And that also goes for the fuel pump. Obviously, that's got a diaphragm in it. And that one is made of supposedly ethanol-resistant rubber. Time will tell. The SU carb on this Morris Minor, on the other hand, 
contains no rubber parts whatsoever. It has a very small nylon hose at the bottom and that's about it for plastic. The rest of it's metal, it's aluminium and uh, aluminium and a little bit of brass in there. Some say that ethanol does eat and corrode carburetor components. I've yet to see that. As I've mentioned, this car's run on the finest potato juice all of my ownership, and I've not noticed any wastage in the float pole or any other components for that matter. It runs absolutely fine. And those rubber hoses were just ones I bought from my local motor factor. Um, it's a small independent one, they're very good. But they were just whatever they had on the shelf, they didn't have any particular ethanol rating or nothing like that and they've been there seven years so I think a lot of it's also luck of the draw luck of the draw as to what parts you get so my opinion on ethanol fuel it's not ideal I'll give you that much um, but I personally don't believe that we'll be able to get low ethanol fuel for very much longer I think um, they will insist on having an ethanol content across the board of a higher variety and so at some point people are either going to have to get really stingy with trying to remove ethanol from your petrol which you can which is hard work and frankly more effort than I'm willing to put in or you're just going to have to run your cars on fuel with higher ethanol content and I'm here to say basically that is possible where I'd be more concerned funnily enough, are modern classics. Things that have fuel injection from the 90s, probably even the late 80s. They've got plastic things, injectors, O-rings. That would be more the kind of thing that I'd be concerned about giving you more grief with perishing rubber and plastics. These older cars that's all mainly metal and a small amount of rubber, I think they'll be all right. Uh, and other people have mentioned things about running issues, um, lower well that's mainly lower octane fuels to be honest, but again I haven't found a problem with it, I don't know what about your old old cars, but then again they were built to run on any old crap really, don't forget back when you know the pre-war that was fuel wasn't as regulated or regimented it was all just whatever you got you got. Ford Model T was designed to run on distilled vegetable juice basically. It was uh, it was meant for I think it was corn or something, corn alcohol. That's what it was designed to run on. So what I'm trying to say is it's not the end of the world. You know? And know your vehicle. I know I've got that one rubber hose on top of there and obviously I've got a fuel pump diaphragm. We'll wait and see what happens to that. The rubber hoses, as you've seen, are perfectly fine. They've been on it seven years. The Reliant, that's run on finest ethanol fuel since I got it back on the road. That's the only thing it's ever had in it, uh, apart from a brief test. Obviously that had a new fuel pump and carburetor diaphragms, as I said. Thus, far, no issues. And also, take into account, you see it fairly frequently on the bottom of forums and people on the comment sections, there's usually a lone Australian in there going, well, to be honest, we've had that for like the last 15 years of a high end ethanol content and I've had no issues whatsoever. So, calm down, basically. It's all going to be all right. And as I said at the beginning of the video, if you can afford to put the higher, nicer, higher octane good fuel in, and let's be honest, if you've got a sporty car, not like one of these boxes, you'll be wanting to put better fuel in it anyway for the minimum form. You want the higher octane stuff, let's be honest. Your Jaguar E types of this world, and even maybe a Rover V8, I mean, those will run on anything, but. Uh, if you want a higher, if you're looking for performance, you want higher octane fuel anyway, and then you're going to have your E5 lower ethanol anyway. So, I suppose this video is more aimed at people 
with these kind of cars. I should also possibly point out that one of the issues with ethanol is it's hygroscopic and it, what that means is it attracts water just by sitting it up bring it in as well as having a water content of itself and that's what can cause you more issues and what I would suggest if you've got a car that doesn't do a lot for a lot of the year you've got your gleaming immaculate thing you know I mean it, this goes back to your sports car type of idea low ethanol as possible in those when if you've got something with fuel sitting in it I think that's where a lot of your issues are going to come from. It comes out for a summer month or a couple of days or something. I would certainly say that you probably want a low ethanol content for that. Because if it sits, it's going to attract moisture. You're going to get dampness. And obviously, oil floats on water. So any moisture is going to sit in the bottom of your tank and then start eating the bottom of your tank. Corrosion. And then that happens anyway even in because you're going to always get condensation and things like that but that does accelerate the problem with ethanol fuel if you're using it quite a lot you're running the fuel through the system it's not really going to be much an issue like these these get used a lot but at the end of the day it's entirely up to you thus far i've had no ill effects no i'll tell a lie i did have a fuel filler cap a locking one on here that had a, it was an old one, it had a rubber ring on it, that just completely disintegrated. It turned totally solid in a matter of minutes, well not a matter of minutes, I think I'd parked the car up for a month or so after filling it up with some particularly fruity ethanol juice and then next time I went to fill it up took the cap off and it just exploded in bits of, it was like, it turned it solid into bits of plastic, you know, the rubber was hard as anything and just shattered. That is the only ill effect that I've had, and that's what you've got to look out for in your hoses. But there you go, that's another opinion from me on the internet. I just thought I'd add it because I've seen a lot of people that get very, you should never run ethanol fuel, always run the highest octane. There's, look, I run a three wheel plastic van, I'm not putting expensive fuel in that piece. To those of you, I've seen the suggestions in the comments, I will be going into some more ignition system stuff, because that seemed quite popular, people want to know what's going on. It seems that it's a bit of a, a bit of a lost art these days, I didn't quite appreciate how much people would be interested in that kind of thing, but there you go, I'll definitely delve more into that. And some basic, some basic classic car systems, fuel and, fuel and spark that seems to be uh, seems to be what people are interested in so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in a future video